I have always enjoyed working on older bikes. There's something about taking an abandoned bike or something that's been really neglected that brings a smile to my face. This old Schwinn Hollywood reminds me of a bike that got me through a hard time. It wasn't a project that I really looked forward to doing, but it did teach me some lessons that have stayed with me throughout my life. In 1997, I was a missionary for my church in California. I'd been out just a few months when I had my bicycle stolen. In those days, we weren't allowed to have mountain bikes in the field. There was just too much risk of them being stolen. And so we were asked to bring out beach cruisers instead. These were large, clunky bikes that stood out more than an average mountain bike might have. But they did the job. They had single-speed coaster brakes, and that's about it. Early on, I swapped out the long, swept-back cruiser bars for some two-inch mountain bike riser bars. It wouldn't be till about 20 years later before I ever heard the term clunker bike. Either way, five months into my mission, my bike was stolen and I needed something else to ride. Things were tight then and I couldn't ask my parents for any money. So a member of our congregation found an old cruiser bike that I could ride. The catch was I had to get it running again. One of the crank arms was bent, and the chain had several links that were rusted solid. Still, with some elbow grease and a lot of WD-40, I was able to get the bike spinning again. People often ask me, where did you learn to work on bikes? And while it's true, I did work in a bike shop before my mission. It was the two years I spent in California, putting thousands of miles on mold bikes and learning how to fix them that really taught me how to be a mechanic. I recall the first time I opened up a coaster brake hub and being completely in shock to see so many parts come out. I couldn't tell what parts were supposed to be there and what parts could be broken, but I do recall the old lithium grease clinging together the two brake pawls attached to the coaster brake clutch. This was long before YouTube, so any help that came was me going to a bike shop or asking the big guy upstairs for some help. I know it sounds odd to talk about fixing bikes in some spiritual sense, but there were many times I found myself on my knees asking for help. Throughout most of my mission, bikes was our only transportation and we would ride between 15 and 20 miles a day to get to appointments and to service projects. When it came down to it, necessity was the mother of invention. Over those two years in California, I served with a lot of missionary companions, all of whom had flat tires and breakdowns. I found that one of the best ways I could give service to them and strangers was to work on their bikes for them. It wasn't always easy being on the streets, but the kindness of strangers and people understanding that we were out there trying to serve made a big difference in the way I saw people and the way that I tried to serve. At the time, I had a small Avocet brand toolkit with me. I still remember that hard plastic case with just two cone wrenches, a worn out headset tool, and a spoke wrench that was worthless. I still remember getting back to my home bike shop and putting a real Park brand spoke tool in my hands and, and wishing I had had that on the mission. Sounds dry. Over the years, one of the things I've learned to appreciate is that sometimes things just need time. A rusted headset, a bottom bracket that's seized up, even a kickstand that won't move forward will often benefit from a overnight bath in WD-40 or some other solvent. Here this old fork did not want to come out. So I shot in a bunch of WD-40, let that sit for a little bit. 
and eventually the threads came loose. So I got this Schwinn Hollywood from the Topeka Community Cycle Project. If you saw my last video, this is a place that refurbishes old used bikes and gives them away to people in the community. So this was not going to be a restoration with a paint job or anything like that. Simply an overhaul of bearings and hopefully a quick polish. Since they've been helping me locate some of my used parts for the last projects, I wanted to pay it forward by fixing the bike for them. The nice thing about chrome plated parts is that they were used on practically everything in pre-war to post-war bikes. So from the chrome cups to the handlebars, even the side of the fenders, most of these parts can be polished up pretty good. It just takes time. Now I am by no means an expert on getting dents out of fenders and frames. But when you have the opportunity to practice on a beat up old bike, why not give it a try? Here I'm using a rock hammer with a rounded front end and a rounded back end of a screwdriver for a tapping surface. It's still not pretty, but at least the tire will spin freely through the fender now. After sorting through bearings and getting things prepped, I decided to do one last pass of polishing the crank set and the chain rings. This is actually pretty addicting. Get some really cheap steel wool from a hardware store and just go to town. All it takes is a little bit of pressure and time and you'll be surprised at how the rust comes off and that shine comes right through. It's been more than 20 years since I inherited that beat up old cruiser. And while I was embarrassed to ride it around the first day, I was very grateful to have something to ride. You never know when something that wasn't that appealing for a project will teach you things that will last a lifetime. I'm grateful for those experiences as a young man, learning how to tear apart coaster brakes, replacing spokes, they really taught me to trust myself and to learn that sometimes trying is more important than getting things right the first time. Thanks for watching and look forward to some new projects coming out soon.